We've done this before. Um, Alright, cool. A set of basic tools, lovely jubbly. Cool, so take this back, they'll sign you off and give you some stickers. Good morning internet, it is 9 o'clock in the morning and welcome back to the channel. Welcome here in Johannesburg, South Africa. In the meantime, I have moved from the guest house to an Airbnb, so I have a little bit more space to prepare everything for the Kalahari Rally. Now, I think in the last video I promised you to explain you a little bit more about what's going to happen and what I'm going to do. Because of course I have zero, zero rally experience. So I entered the Kalahari Rally in the Adventure Raids class or segment and that is pretty much meant for people like me who have never done this before and just to gain some experience and it also means that I'll be navigating with GPS instead of a road book but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy so I will talk you through the stages the first one is the super special and this is a stage which determines the starting position it's a 100 km fast flowy hard packed tracks open savanna type tracks with no rocks then comes stage one, which is 393 kilometers. It's on open hard packed gravel roads, access to short sandy sections, and there's a short tar section. Then stage two, which is really, really long. That's 734 kilometers. That's a long day. On open hard packed gravel roads, some sandy sections, and yeah, that's it. Then stage number three is only 111 kilometers. It's on dunes, salt pans, and we get to play on the Hakskin pan, which has the world land speed record pan. I don't know, it's where they did the world land speed record thing, I think, on that salt pan. Then comes stage four, which is 331 kilometers. Open hard packed gravel roads along the Namibia border, dry pans, and the entire stage is run on a private farm. Stage five, 729 kilometers. It's a long scenic one alongside the Botswana border. Then there will be 25 kilometers of dunes. Oh dear. Okay, the last 100 kilometers will be tar. All right. Then the last stage is stage number six, which is only 100 kilometer, which is a fantastic stage over Old Volcanic Mountain. It's 100% hard pack, fast flowy open tracks and some bush. Old volcanic mountain range close to Skilpatshek border. It's rocky with steep climbs and descents. And then there are 44 km of fast sections along the Botswana border and then 25 km of tar and then the finish. So if you add all of this up, that means that it's 2,500 km over six stages and then the opener. So that is going to be absolutely mental. It's going to be six, seven days of crazy, crazy riding. Two of the stages are, are well over 700 kilometers. I've never done that distance. I was thinking back, what is the longest distance I ever did in one day? And it must have been that ride to North Cape with Ronin, which was about 700 kilometers. But that was on Ronin, which has double the power as Savannah. And well, that was all on tar. And now, of course, this is mostly off-road and dunes and all of that. So to be honest with you, I don't even know if Savannah and me can do over 700 kilometer of off-roading in one day. It's going to be really, really tough. So the first step of my preparations is, of course, to get Savannah ready. So first let's go and see our mechanic. Somewhere around here. Alright, Savannah is ready. I am now going to order an uber and then go to the bike shop and pick her up 
And in the meantime, I can show you something else. This is how my helmet looks like now. I had to uh, get goggles because the dust is just not going to work uh, in the rally. And the cool thing is that I got a quick release system. So I can take the, loosen the goggles from one side with one hand, which is going to be especially helpful because I'll obviously have my camera on the front. So it'll be a little bit difficult to take the goggles on and off with the normal when they go all around. Um, so yeah, pretty stoked. Let's uh, order an uh, Uber. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good are you? Good, good. You're going to put your bike. Yes. Oh, lovely. Well, that's a bit of a different look now with my goggles. Very different. Anyway, um, Savannah is all ready. I will, uh, when I get back to my Airbnb, I will show you uh, everything that has been done. I have to ride a little bit careful because I have new uh, knobbly tires, of course. But uh, let's first get back and then uh, I'll show you everything. Okay, as promised, a quick look at Savannah and all the work that has been done to make her rally ready and kind of ready for another 2,500 kilometers of absolute abuse, I think, in a very short period of time. Um, as you can see, I got some uh, new tires. And these are quite nice and aggressive, should be good for sand. These are the Michelin, what are they called? Um, Star Cross 5. And then this is how that front tire looks like. So that should be, should be good, I think. And then I got a brand new chain and sprocket set. Um, I got extra lights because I think I mentioned this before, but this rally is actually a qualifier for Dakar, so it's it's serious. So I need to comply with loads of like safety regulations and all sorts of things. And it says that OEM lights are not allowed, so you need LED. So I got these two here at the top, uh, which is good. So if if the bike falls over, they will not get damaged. And they are attached to the to the big light. See, look at that. Ooh. That should pass the inspection, hopefully. And then what else? Um, oh yeah, so regulations also say that you need to bring two of these, like these are like mini fire extinguishers. <laughs> I need to bring two of them. So I think, I don't know how the other riders are going to do it, if they attach it on the bike or something like that. Um, I also need to bring six meters of tow rope. So yeah, uh, my, my, th my thinking is now that I will actually go and ride with my tank bag and then put this in my tank bag. I think that is probably for me the best solution um, because on the rear, I already have my extra fuel tank, which is now completely tight. These straps are just basically for extra. It's attached here with the proper system, which is mounted on my little luggage rack. So with this extra fuel, uh, tank I should hopefully make it now I should definitely make it in between the fuel stops because you need to have a range of 250 kilometers which I don't have especially not if I'm trying to ride very fast I will never make 250 kilometers on a 7.7 .7 liter tank um, so that's why I have to bring some extra but this looks actually quite good and it's super tight so I think that's fine and nothing will happen if the bike will fall over or anything like that either those are the main things and then of course yeah i got the oil change done you know air filter is all good uh, they did a valve check a cam chain check all of that just the normal kind of check and maintenance and all of that that's also done um, so yeah i think uh, this is it for uh, savannah i think she is totally ready yeah next step is to get to the start of the rally i guess off we go! I am now here with Mandy. If you remember, my friend um, that I went to see in Plettenberg Bay. Um, Mandy is, is a South African and uh, we've been friends for 11 years. 11 years. And uh, she's coming with me to the rally, uh, which is so super nice uh, because now, well, we can now go together uh, in the van. Uh, but also during the rally, uh, Mandy is going to try and help me out a little bit with some of the filming because I will just have to focus on the riding. And um, I think not everybody realizes this, but during my normal rides, I spend a lot of time on the filming. And um, I think with some of these stages, I just don't have the time 
to change batteries and just fiddle around with the cameras all the time and also like when it's like resting time then it will be really nice if uh, I don't have to hold up a camera all the time <laughs> now this fan is called Betty and with this fan as you can see as Savannah is in the back we're now going to ride to the start of the rally which is in Mafikeng which is almost 400 kilometers from here and so we are with the van because now of course I have these extreme like knobbly tires on Savannah. So riding 400 kilometers on the highway on knobblies is not really nice. And we will need a vehicle anyway during the rally. So that's why I'm not driving to the, or not riding to the start of the rally, but we go with the van. And um, yeah, it's super excited. I'm so excited. This afternoon, um, Savannah and me will have to pass the technical inspection and safety inspection. So they're going to check everything if I comply with all the rules and I have all the things with me that I need to. So now we're just leaving at Johannesburg. As you can see, it's a little bit busy on the road. On our way to Mafekeng, on our way to the start of the rally. We have arrived in Mafekeng. We are almost there. Um, the meeting point or the first bouviac is at the rugby club, which is uh, over there. <laughs> and when we passed on the other side, I already saw a lot of bikes, there's tents. So we are diving straight into the action, I think. We're right on time. Um, in about, I think, two hours, I am up for my technical inspection. So we have some time to have a lunch and then uh, sort out everything, make sure I have everything in place. Entrance, see, it's, it's right here. I can see a lot of cars and trucks and everything. I also know a little bit more about the participants. There are 69 competitors, most of them uh, motorcycles, over 50 motorcycles, and then a few cars and a few buggies. Um, I'm the only woman, I think the only one with a 250. <laughs> good afternoon. I'm good, are you? Good, we're good. We're coming for the rally. For the rally? Yeah. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, red lines. I don't know what that is. Oh, those are the cars, I think. That's, that's, those are the cars that are competing. Anyway, another very important detail that I didn't even know until this day is that there is a free ticket to Dakar up for grabs. So if you win the Kalahari Rally, you win yourself a free ticket to Dakar, which is, of course, massive. So it's really exciting. Are we? Didn't you say that way? <laughs> I'm trying to reorganize my, my toolkit. This is the six meter tow rope that I have to bring. That's quite small. But I also need to bring like a basic set of tools. And I want to fit most of them in this pocket here because I have a little I have space here. So I have to go around. Okay, Savannah is all ready. Look at that, everything is sorted. Um, I got everything, I think, from the checklist. I have it ready. In half an hour, uh, I'll go through the technical inspection. Hopefully, I'll pass. Slowly, more more bikes are coming, as you can see. There are some big, big, big bikes here. Look at these ones. These are 500 cc, I think. KTMs. It's like the whole rally. Out kitties, and then we got some big bikes like these ones. Look at that. Our bandages and compression bandages. There we go. Um, energy bars, green hydrates. And a torch while you're in there. Do you have a torch? What do we do advise as well? Every if you run empty every second one chuck some rehydrate in. Oh, yeah. okay. Just to, it's it's a good thing. So yeah. your Garmin yeah. Mini Reach, the yeah. little tracker, yeah. Yeah. that's gonna be Saturday. They'll hand you that. Take it in the morning, give it back in the evening, and then they'll charge it overnight. There'll be a sign-in sign-out form just so that when you don't have it, okay. you can say, well, I, I signed for a yeah. ticket. Um, so fuel. So make the last part of your day filling up. Um, because sometimes the fuel vehicles have to duck at like 11 o'clock and they go cash um, yeah, I so the 500 bucks isn't like always oh, have 500 bucks just have okay, cash yeah, on I, you because you, you're a traveler yeah tow rope yes. here we go chances are that's going to get used in the fire sticks yep. there because the, the racing guys they 
master links break. And yeah, they get towed by other people. So you'll see people towing, yeah. Um, all right, helmets, a beautiful arrow. Chest guards, or a jacket, got a jacket. Pants, uh, boots. Boots are, yeah. There we go. Gloves and goggles, gloves. That's perfect. Um, camelback. There we go, beautiful. Um, do you ride with a neck brace? Just to have to make a note of it. Fuel list, there's no mods. Did you just put that on for this event or? Yes. Okay. It'll be interesting to see, maybe it works. And I'm all the cars, so we have backup fuel with us, so if you're stuck, but. Yeah. Anyway, but I, thought that might, uh, I didn't want to like have to wait for a vehicle to pass me. So it's, it's worth having, no, it's yeah. definitely worth having, it's a good thing, but just like worst case. Yeah. Aha. We've yeah. done this before. <laughs> um, Alright, cool. A set of basic tools, lovely jubbly. We'll so take this back, they'll sign you off and give you some stickers. I'm um, just clearly visible on the front and sides. Okay. And party karate. From the Netherlands. <laughs> As you can see, more and more vehicles are coming, more are arriving. I think they've already finished all the technical inspections for the adventure raid, which I'm part of as well. And today are the technical inspections of all the other competitors, including the cars, I think, and the buggies and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update of all the vehicles that are around here. I've been told that one of those cars cost 6 million South African rands, which is, how much is that? It's a lot of money. Is it okay if I film your cars a little bit? Yeah? Cool. Look at this. They probably blast like 200 kilometers per hour with the thing. <laughs> wow! Look at this. What's the top speed that these can do? They they limit to 180, so we're not allowed to go faster than that. But so they could. Can, yeah, the most that we've recorded in in, in a stage. Um, with the, with the restricted out, I think it's 201, 201 or 201. 201. Wow. Which is, as I said, the, but for safety reasons, they make it 180. You don't, have, you don't really want to go have more than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> check this out. Oh, look at that. Okay, so, so jump you. Your foot there. Yeah, that foot. Yeah. Yeah. Swing in. Yeah, one swing in. Like a dream come true. Look at this. Check his arms. Okay, wow. so then. Okay. Push power switch down. Power so switch down. Yeah, power switch down. Just wait to fire everything up. There. Okay, yeah. So everything fires itself up. Look at this. It's in neutral that we can see. Yeah. So now you can push start button. You see the red button. Actually, there'll be one oh, on your left hand side there, yeah. I, and and I do nothing there. here. Nothing. Okay. You just hold the button until it starts. <laughs> wow. This, this is all the instrumentation. This fires up all into this. Odo, GPS, they have other tracking devices to come, we have other GPS's here, yeah. and then you see the cars pack with all its, uh, all its spares, these are earphones for stage. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can have things like uh, air conditioning. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then, and then, Aircon, yeah, yeah. this? Don't, yeah, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the gear lever. Okay. So, one, basically very straight, one. That's so straight back. Four, three, two, one. And this brake. It's a cut brake, so it's like a handbrake. Handbrake. Wow, oh, look at this. Yeah, this this is a very, like the whole gearbox is one of the most expensive parts on uh, the car. Yeah, 23,000 euro or 500,000 rand. Push left, jack down. On the, there, there, there. Yeah. Jack down. Yeah. Push, hold it. And now jack up. On the left as well. All the way up. Wow. This is so cool. And then I just go, I can't do anything, right? Yeah, That's a neutral. Push, 
That's it. 480 liter tank. 480 have. liter tank. Liter. What what range does that give you? We need to for Dakar we'll do about 800 kilometers between a stage and a liaison section. So that's what they ask you to do a maximum. In the dunes, it'll do almost one kilometer per liter, maybe one to 1.2. <laughs> the racing section maybe 1.5 to 1.8, hard packed fast, and then liaison four kilometers to a liter. So it's thirsty. One liter per kilometer. Yeah. Yes, so I know you guys want reputation from friends and other Dakar And then there's also loads more bikes arrived. And what I understand, um, I'm just going to show you some of the real rally bikes that they have out here. There's a lot of Husqvarna. It's mostly Husqvarna, I think, KTM. Those are kind of the main brands, but have a look at these bikes. See, so they have the road books up here, which I don't have. I have run into familiar face. <laughs> it's James. So um, we're just going to have a look at his bike now and how he's going to prepare. So James is actually going to be one of the gate openers. So that means that he will be riding in front of the rally um, to actually open all the gates so that the rally riders can so just. We're, we're like a, a route opener. This. I've managed to get in with the route openers, which is really cool because I'll be able to ride ride the uh, ride the stages in front of everybody for a change, and, uh, <laughs> and make sure the gates are open and that things make sense on the road book and so forth. So the bike, I, I won't have the I won't have the um, Sentinel and all the bits and pieces they're putting on the competitors' bikes. I'll just have a uh, I've got a Montana uh, GPS on here, and uh, I'll be riding with Campbell and uh, be really great it's, it's a nice way back into riding from such a big effort in saudi earlier this year and yeah i've just got the usual stuff on the bike uh, the front screen's off at the moment the usual okay. medical kit there's two yeah. charging stations which helps a lot where and um, what do you uh, that's for like yeah, this, that, the tracker and everything yeah i just like to run the, the gps off this one all oh, right and yeah. i've got two usbs on this side which um we didn't have at dakar because Bart, does, Bart at Baz Racing doesn't like to understandably put that sort of stuff on the bike because you can forget to unplug something and then it goes flat in the night and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just, I've just made it a bit more user friendly. Did you already Otherwise, put the road book? Is this no, a that's an old... Actually, that's still the road book from, from Dakar. day 12. So okay. I thought I'd leave it in there to show people <laughs> yeah. here. So I'll pull that oh, out. You won't need it. You'll just run Yeah, it. but I'll roll, I'll roll the... I've got another ICO here for, for a trip meter. And I'll roll the, they might give us road books on this one just to to make sure that the road book's making sense. Of course, yeah. Uh, 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 up front. So I'm really chuffed to, yeah, to be here and cool, uh, help out the guys here and uh, and get riding again. She's, she's still as, the did bike is pretty much as it was. Yeah, I was just going to ask, did you change anything ever since? Uh, I changed one big thing. I made this homemade, it's a temporary thing here. Uh, one of the biggest problems I had at Dakar was not getting the trail braking because there's not enough downward adjustment on here it's, okay it's fouling on the because pipe because your there yeah yeah and, and with with long legs and size 13 boots your most people their feet are level in my case it, it tilts down a bit and i couldn't get on the brake properly okay so i had no good feeling on the back brake so that that's huge now i can actually trail brake the bike which is a, a method of uh, setting the bike up into the into the corners and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really confident on the bike it's so nice to have her here. As I said before, it's the best navigational training that you can get right across the world. Um, the navigation is pretty tricky here. Right. So it's a lot of it's a lot of commands and a lot of uh, like um, fast direct. changes in terms. Yeah, of the navigation is, is easier at Dakar than oh, wow. it is here. Okay. Def definitely. So for anybody wanting to get because the, the navigation is the big one to get your head around for me anyway. Uh, that's the thing I really struggled with. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just great to. Yeah, come here and, and help them out with the event and have a good thrash in the process. All right, another day has come to an end. All the preparations are finally done. I've changed a little bit the setup of Savannah. Um, one of the other riders here, Eugene, he owns a company and they make these bags, Gida Motorbags. <laughs> and he was so kind to 
give me one, which I'm really happy with, because then I actually don't have to ride with my tank bag. It, 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 would, it would have been possible with my tank bag, but I actually prefer not to ride with my tank bag now. So I have a little bit more space at the front and just stick the things that I need to bring here on the back. Um, so yeah, I think I'm all sorted now. I got a fuel card. The field is completely full now. Um, everybody's like pumping with excitement about tomorrow. So I can't wait. Um, but before I end this video, I just wanted to show you on the map where I actually am. So you have a bit of an idea. So this is where Johannesburg is. And then we drove with the van. We drove all the way here to Mafikeng. And basically, this is the area of the rally. So we will be going this way and then we're going all the way until the Hakskane Pan here. But this is all alongside the border with Botswana. And then we go all the way until the border with Namibia. So it will be all this area where you can see there's almost no roads. There's just nothing, nothing, nothing here but Kalahari Desert. So that was it for today. And yeah, in the next episode, the race is really going to begin. So I better get some rest. Oh no, first we're going to get a briefing and then get some rest and then tomorrow it's really going to kick off. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video. If you look closely, the lesser spotted <laughs> itchy boot. Representing. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Reorganizing my things for the third time. But now I have a new bag. Look at this, look at this. But for what, what are you preparing for? Oh, Something yeah. bad to happen? <laughs> I'm preparing for the worst. <laughs> but yeah, make a turn so then we can, you can leave easily. Like... <laughs> do it, play it cool dude, play it cool.